Huge thank you to the sponsor of this video, it is Squarespace, and whatever type of creator you are, whether you're a filmmaker or photographer, Squarespace is the place for you to build a home on the internet. The RED Komodo is a really interesting camera. It's supposed to be priced around $6,000 US, which might sound like a lot or a little, depending where you come from. If you're a traditional RED user, it's a great deal. But if you're used to shooting mirrorless cameras, you might be looking at it as a chance to upgrade to something truly cinema quality, but for a budget that is actually achievable. My friend Frank Zonderland has been a RED shooter for years and he got an early beta version of the RED Komodo. So we took it out to some windmills to see how it performed. We had the RED Komodo rigged up on a Ronin S and it did work, but unfortunately we didn't have all of the right pieces. So the balance was a little bit off. And I think we ended up with bumpier footage than we would have liked because of how we had to hold the gimbal. So anyway, don't pay too much attention to the movement in these shots because sometimes it gets jerked when it shouldn't. But I have seen other people balance their Komodo on a Ronin S and it worked perfectly. So we just were missing a few pieces. So if you're living in the world of mirrorless, one consideration is obviously going to be price. Moving to the Komodo is relatively expensive. For traditional RED users, it feels really cheap. $6,000 is a lot less than the 20,000 minimum you'd need to invest into a RED system before. You used to have to buy a lot of RED accessories. Now you can really get started with a bare bones kit. So, you know, you're looking at less than $10,000 to get completely started with a RED system. The best mirrorless options from Sony, Canon, and Panasonic are all around $4,000 right now. So just think about that. You know, you're gonna spend more on accessories with the REDs. The batteries are more expensive. You're gonna need more of them. So let's say you're buying something new. You're gonna spend about twice as much to get a RED Komodo as you would a A7S III or a Canon R5 or a Panasonic S1H. But keep in mind, if you wanna use Sony, Canon, or Panasonic's cinema cameras, you're gonna be spending more than $10,000. For example, the other cameras I really love right now, the C300 Mark III and the Sony FX9, those both cost about $11,000 but then you also get kind of all the bells and whistles. So you may have to buy less additional accessories than with the Komodo. And I'm sure a few Blackmagic fans are screaming in the comments already that I didn't mention the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K, which costs less. I think it's $2,500 right now. And it's comparable to the Komodo. It has colors that are easy to work with. It has a lot of dynamic range. So I'll say that if you're just getting started and you want a more cinema friendly camera, Blackmagic probably makes more sense. You'll be able to extract more value out of it and you won't be making a lot of big compromises. It's really an amazing package. I, I haven't shot with one that much, so I don't have much more to say about it, but I know they're good. <laughs> Something I didn't know before we started shooting it is that the sensor is a little bit wider than other Super 35s, like by C200, for example. Like physically, it's around 27 millimeters instead of 24. So let's say you're comparing it to full frame cameras, which I tend to. It's not as bad of a crop as you might see on some other sensors. Plus, I like having that little bit of room on the side to side if you are shooting it for UHD and you use something like DCI or this is 17 to 9, you have some room to crop left and right. Obviously, this is, I mean, this is 6K footage. You can crop it however you want, but... If you're interested in the RED Komodo, and I mean, you're watching this video, so... <laughs> there's one of two reasons that you're doing it. Either it's the RED brand or it's image quality. Hopefully, hopefully it's image quality because that's the most important thing here. And this is the reason that I'm really interested in this camera. I see a lot of people say things about color science that don't make any sense to me. The mark of a good sensor is that it is basically image neutral. In the end, everything that should be affecting your final output is the lighting and the lensing, and then how you grade it in post. The sensor that's capturing it should be as impartial as possible. And moving to something like a RED Komodo lets you get there. While you're shooting on something like the Sony or the Canon or the Panasonic, there is still a flavor that is definitely added in there. And you need to do some work to extract the best possible image out of those cameras. That's not to say that in a lot of situations they can't look as good as the red, but it's very appealing to me to have colors that are just unquestionable. They're as good as what Hollywood uses. And the Komodo is at that level. In all the tests I've seen, it stacks up really nicely against the other contemporary red cameras so it could just be cut in with them and that's what it was designed to do is designed to be a red crash camera so when you're shooting a camera with this much dynamic range and color flexibility you have a lot of options afterwards versus if you're shooting 10-bit baked into these other cameras you're kind of committing to the way they treat colors. What's appealing to me is to stop thinking about image quality. I don't need to worry about custom picture profiles or over or under exposing. You just shoot it and it looks great and it's got a global shutter, which is 
very unique. If you don't know what a global shutter is, it basically captures everything on the sensor at the exact same moment. Same as how it worked in the film days. So the whole time we've been shooting digital, there is a rolling shutter, so it's capturing from the top to bottom of the sensor, and that's why you get that wobble as things move quickly past the camera. Anyway, there are very few global shutter cameras, so this is a big deal. But there are some very real downsides, and uh, since I'm, you know, I'm considering which of these cameras I should pick up next, they are heavy on my mind. Probably the biggest thing for me is slow motion. Uh, right now, even though this is only in beta, like the camera's not really released, so some of these features could change, but you can only shoot up to 40 frames per second in the full 6K, and then the sensor starts to crop a lot. So even to get to 60 frames per second, you're looking at a major crop. That seems crazy when I could shoot full frame 120 on a Sony a7S III. I mean, that's, that's a huge difference. What else? You're gonna lose image stabilization. You're gonna lose the great eye tracking style autofocus where you can just let your subject walk around and the sensor can just figure out where they are. Red might get to that point, but it will not be in the next year or two. You're gonna have to rely on just single point autofocus, which is pretty decent actually. So I'm currently focusing on my iPhone while monitoring. <laughs> I don't think I can capture how weird that is. We were testing it in our shots and generally it found its subject and it very smoothly moved back and forth. I think the biggest downside is that lack of tracking. So you have to be very particular about how you set up your shots. But a big thing with these mirrorless cameras that always gets to me is you really do need to learn how to use that particular camera. Like if the log needs to be overexposed by one or two stops to get the best noise to dynamic range ratio. Or on a Sony, I, I hate that you have to configure all the buttons just to make it usable. Canon does a much better job of this, but then you need to manage overheating and record limits. I'm super sick of record limits. And in the end, shooting on the red just feels really good. Like it's a good experience and it makes you want to pick up the camera way more often, which makes a real difference. It really reminded me of shooting on traditional film Hasselblads. It's almost exactly the same size and shape and the placement of that top monitor. It's really smart. I, I love what Red has done with this and I just want to, I just want to carry this camera with me everywhere and just shoot everything with it. If you're in a filmmaking business, you know that gear isn't the most important thing, but your personal brand might be. So Squarespace can definitely help you out with that. I've told you before about their mobile friendly responsive design templates, but did I tell you how easy they are to completely customize to your needs? Your brand colors, your fonts, all of that can be quickly integrated. Honestly, you can have the whole thing set up and looking like your brand in just a few minutes. It's really easy to build a beautiful portfolio that focuses on your work, it doesn't have any third party branding, it doesn't rely on hosting from a social media network that you really can't rely on. One thing I like is they take care of a lot of the SEO. So you don't need to learn much about it, honestly. You just build your site and everybody can find it on the internet. It's just there in search engines. Then you can use Squarespace's detailed analytics to find out how people are discovering your page and further optimize it. So your great content won't go unnoticed. So go to squarespace.com and start building your website today. It's free to start, very easy. You'll have it up and running in just a few minutes. And then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Tyler Stallman. And you can get 10% off your first website or domain using offer code Tyler Stallman. So once again, thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, but also, for helping me have a great website for over a decade now. At this point, do you feel like there's any sort of perfect lenses that you would want to pair with the Komodo? Uh, well, I think the Leica N lenses are really interesting. I just bought an adapter. I think you're right. Yeah, the, any of those smaller Leicas would be a perfect fit. Like the all metal construction, the fact that they're you know nice lenses and small, they, they would yeah. fit well on this small little red body. The only thing is Kipper Tie is a company from the UK. They're selling a PL mount that has ND filters behind the lens. Yeah, I, I wanna see those because I'm, I'm curious if they are better than the Canon ND filters. On the extreme end, the built-in ND adapter from Canon, um, when you turn the ND all the way, it looks like it sh shifts the color a lot. Like it's, you know, it's only really great in its mid-range if you're doing something professional with it. This is not a variable ND though, it's three, Right. different stages of ND. It's, that's a variety enough for me. The thing about NDs that kills me is carrying around multiple pieces of glass, making sure that they all stay perfectly clean, changing them, and then they get smudges on them. It's, it's the convenience of it all being in one place. That's what's important to me. 
that's what you have assistance for. <laughs> that's what you have assistance for. I don't have enough assistance. Let's take a look at some low light shots. The only camera I have to compare it to at the time is the Canon R, which I'm shooting on right now. And the thing to keep in mind is that most mirrorless are doing a bunch of noise removal in camera while you're shooting because it's compressed format. With cameras like the Red Komodo that are shooting raw, there is no noise removal. So if you're doing any of that, it's all in post can clean it up. A lot of people will do that. For example, DaVinci Resolve or Neat Image can do a great job of taking it away, but just keep in mind that'll take a lot of extra time later. So what should you do? Or more importantly, what should I do? Because I'm very interested in all these cameras and I can't, I can't buy them all. And probably neither can you. Uh, advice I always give is don't go to YouTubers or reviewers thinking that they can solve your camera needs or tell you what you should actually be buying because they don't know. It's really important to take a look at your video business to figure out exactly what your needs are. So for example, if you're in a bigger market like LA or New York where there's big clients that have specific expectations, they're gonna want you to have certain camera brands on set and then the red logo actually really matters because they know that it will look a certain way, that the final image will be what they expect. But there's a lot of clients that don't know or care what you're shooting on, and in those cases, it might make more sense to have a Sony, Canon, Blackmagic, whatever, because all that matters is the final result, and the truth is all of these cameras can give you an incredible result right now. The real edge that the red Komodo is gonna give you is you can just stop thinking about image quality. The dynamic range and the color set and you can just focus on your work. But I could talk about this for hours more and I do on the podcast. So search for Stallman podcast in any podcast player of choice. You are going to find it. And I talk to other filmmakers, YouTubers, creators, photographers about how they make the things that they make. So hopefully I see you over there guys or I'll see you in the next video.